Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I created these Asian eyes and the skin tone. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, the outline is done freehand, so I'm just putting a centre point on my board there and then using imaginary angles and working from that and just roughly get things into position. You have to guess to start with, but I'm using the pencil on a horizontal plane against that centre point and finding the location of things and then basically um, just feeling your way, putting the marks on very lightly and then once you're happy with the position of it and then you can firm it up. I've got loads of videos in my channel how to draw freehand. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check those out after you've watched the video. The surface I'm using is pastel matte dark grey and the pencil is a Carbothello 708 which is an amazing pencil for this, it's just the perfect colour for it and then I'm sculpturing the lines using a Faber-Castell needable eraser. These are the colours I'll be using for the skin tone for the underdrawing along with these here as well. I'll talk you through them as I go along uh, but basically what I'm doing here is just putting the white down first and then just getting an idea of where these uh, shapes are more pressure where it's lighter, less pressure where it's mid-tone. Just putting the basic colours in here at the moment, just brown and blue. Then in the white of the eye, I'm using orange and blue, which is complementary to each other. It creates nice warm greys or cold greys. I'm just going through this pretty quickly. So we're just going through onto the white now, putting the white down first the underdrawing, just getting basic shapes. I mean, I'm not interested in getting the value right at this stage. All it is, is just getting an idea where the shapes are and redrawing the outline and getting some sort of form. Again, putting more pressure on that white where it's lighter, less where it's mid-tone. And just glazing colour in. Adding the underdrawing as well as fills the tooth of the pastel mat up a little, so the subsequent layers a lot easier to put on as well and all this is gaining sort of texture each layer builds up the skin tone so it sort of shines through on each layer then white and various pressure and then just glaze over them with the red the yellow ochre and just do the same right across the face there now for the hair I'm just filling that in with the brown first, just get an idea, just mapping the actual strands of hair out. But I'm not putting too much work in the hair because it's all about the eyes and skin tone. So I've got to keep the video quite short. So I didn't want to spend too much time with the hair, but I'm just sort of mapping it out, nevertheless. And it's basically just enjoy this freedom of just moving the actual pigment around. It's a good chance to, uh, to create looseness and a feeling of energy in your work before you start adding these richer colours. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now the rich colour stage, I'm using the same colours really but just adding more pigment. But first of all, I'm putting a more vibrant white down. So I'm using a Faber-Castell white which is more vibrant and, sh and stands out more. So when I glaze over the top, it makes it more vivid. Um, I'm using black as well now, just putting some black in there to get some idea of value. So what I'm doing now is blocking in the values and chroma. It's not the detail stage, that will be later. I'm just blocking in all these colours uh, so I get some idea of the value overall. And then I'll tidy it all up later on in the video. it down to real time now so you can see what pace I go at and how I build these layers up it's just a case of just keep putting that white down glaze over the top here I'm just putting some sort of eyelashes just mapping it out where things will be uh, ready for when I do the detail stage so it's just a matter of getting that sort of 
the feeling right so I'm trying to keep it loose still uh, I'm not trying to get in really intense with the details just relaxing just feeling the energy just open your heart let go of that mind and just feel as though you're drawing this image from inside you rather than going outside of yourself to do it it's surprising the difference that will make just using the blue and the orange to create greys so if a more orange creates warmer grey and then less orange and more blue creates more of a cooler colour so you're just sort of swapping from one to the other using a Karen Dash blue here just to colour the highlight in the pupil there um, yeah it's just a case of trying these different colours out really and seeing what works so I'm putting the white down first then glazing over with colour um, and it's just playing really to see what's needed for when you start putting the details in later so continuing with the darker areas then so I'm sort of getting all those dark areas in first before I start putting the colour in the skin and just mapping out the hair area so I'm not putting too much work into the hair because it's all, you know it's a tutorial about skin and eyes but I'm just mapping it out all the same um, and just getting an idea of the depth of them shadows which will help me to find the colours then for the rest of the face now for the rich colour on the skin tone using the same colours as I did before but adding that white to it now uh, the Faber Castell white which is really fresh so I needed to get that fresh white underneath the colour to create that sort of vividness I'm looking for so Carbothello is okay for subtle areas but when you need sort of strong chroma or sort of brightness and freshness it, you know the uh, Faber Castell all the Caran d'Ache white is the best thing to use really I've found now to create the texture of the skin I'm using the pencil in a certain way I'm, I'm using it into sort of circles dashes I'm just connecting to the reference image and letting that movement happen so I'm just feeling away and letting it flow and just let them movements just appear the more you can let go of the mind and the more you can connect to the heart and just focus on bringing that image into you rather than going too much out and focusing on the image you'll find that it will come sort of automatic for you and it'll just flow now I'm using the cotton bud just to soften things up a little and then put the texture back in now I'm using three colors the warm red lemon yellow and the ultramarine blue as a base sort of primary colors now just try out this pink from the Karen Dash, it's called Portrait Pink it's quite a cold red, uh, a pinky colour so I mixed that in with it just to see what that would do just on that cheek there <clears throat> but I only used it for that sort of area the rest of it I just used the warm red, yellow and the blue and then just mix my own sort of shades just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for the wonderful support every month. I really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. It means a world to me. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check the link in the description below. This study will be on there, real-time audio, real-time video at some point. So be sure to check that out. The more you can relax and the more you can just let go of expectations and memories of what you've done before and just flow with the movement of things, uh, it gets done. You just have to be patient and persevere, that's the thing, and build it up. Eventually it will come together. I am finding the cotton bud quite useful now in, in creating that subtle blend of texture but I just keep blending it and then just going over again, adding texture and blending it, adding, adding texture. I use a finger a lot as well because that's a habit I've got with my oil painting, just dabbing the paint with me a finger just to soften the edges. So uh, I'm doing that here as well. Now my aspiration is to actually make the skin feel like it's breathing. Um, so that's 
the idea when I'm connecting to it. I'm, I'm sensing the life behind the reference image and trying to recreate that. Now, if you've got a pencil that is very similar to the colour you're looking for, that's awesome. So this one here is a Carbothello Payne's Grey. It's perfect for this. It's just the right shade. So if you're lucky enough to find that in the kit, which is very unusual because you, you always have to sort of slightly subtle it up, uh, is always use it. Then if you do need to just adjust it here and there, you can just use the primaries over the top of it just to um, create the correct feel to it. But if you've got something that is initially the right colour, use that. But I'm just blocking it in there to start with. Right, so I've just jumped a little bit there. So the skin tone is similar to what I've just done, uh, just carrying on to the rest of the portrait. But now what I'm doing here again is just adding that little bit more detail to the eyebrows. I thought you might want to see how I created those. So again, using that a Payne's Grey and then the actual white of the Faber-Castell to create that sort of vibrancy. So I'm trying to get that overall feeling to start with. So it's again blocking in and then the details come eventually. So I'm doing the other side, so I'm working on both at the same time. So then you get a balance then of the uh, overall look of it. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. So I'm using the actual brown now to mix in with the Payne's Grey. Uh, just to create a, a different depth to it, a darker area. So the plains grey and the brown together creates more of a, a darker feel to it. So I'm using that, I'm just using the edge of the pencil as well, just to create that line initially. But everything will be thinned out uh, and subtled up as I go along. So I'm basically putting it into place first, but what you see me doing here now is just you sort of cut in the lines and reshaping them and then just keep glazing over the top. Now I'm using the cotton board, just dabbing it here and there just to soften those edges as well. It's really important to do that because if you don't want it to look like a caterpillar over the eye, um, so you need to be really subtle with it and uh, just dabbing with the actual cotton board does the trick. Continuing with the uh, real time now, so you can see the pace I'm working at, and now I'm using the edge of the pencil like I mentioned earlier, just here and there, darkening certain spots, because it's not one complete dark line, it's very sort of subtly broken up with different shades. And then in between here, like I'm molding the actual um, hair with using the whites, so I'm reshaping things and making the, the hair thinner and then just glaze then over uh, just to create the correct feel again. If you're interested in my colour theory, I have actually got a free class for you and it's basically based on a colour wheel for the skin tone. And it, applies really to anything I do even if it's a landscape, pet, wildlife so you, you're welcome to it. The link is in the description below so please check that out after the video. You're limited to what you can do with the pencils uh, regarding the really vibrancy of them so I need to put the Rembrandt white stick in there first and then I'm using the Faber-Castell to reshape the white so initially just blobbing that white in there and then just keep moving it around then with the pencil afterwards. Slowing it down to real time now. Now I've just added the actual eyelashes in there with a brown pencil and then just dabbing with the cotton bud just to soften the edges there. Now you don't find many eyelashes on the Asian eyes on this reference image anyway. Just the odd one here and there. 
This is a great tip for you for putting those really sort of sharp highlights in is to twist the pencil tip onto the pastel mount and the actual grain of the pastel mount will grab the pigment and then I'm just doing the same thing over top of the white with the blue. This is the cobalt blue from the Carbothello range. Now I'm just getting the value right now in the iris and the shadow and where the eyelashes are. So I'm putting that bit of black in there just to sort of give that depth. It makes all the difference, makes the eye pop then, makes them highlights brighter. So it's really important to get the value correct within the eyes. And then I'm glazing over them with the cobalt blue, uh, ultramarine blue over the top of the iris there to create reflections. I didn't put too much detail in the hair because obviously this is a tutorial on eyes and skin tone. So I've just put a little bit of detail here and there, just creating the correct value by adding that black and just glazing over with yellow ochre and brown. Now this is the most important area now for the skin to make it look real. Now I've gone really tiny now with the marks so I'm creating that real subtlety and blend and smoothness but a very very small circles and using the carbothal pencil which is softer and it's like a chalkier feel so it just blends really easy and I'm just going here and there just adding that detail so it looks more sort of smoother and not so sort of bitty. Just dabbing here and there with a cotton board as well, just to soften those edges, because it's all about getting the chroma right, the edges, the value, and the temperature when you're doing these details. So that's what I'm doing here, just altering the temperature here and there, putting a bit more blue or a bit more red, just creating that sort of overall feeling. Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's any questions at all, please leave a message in the description below and I'll get back to you. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want to watch more of my work, please check out this video here.